Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Snows, your host for Boot Sequence, and in sickness or in health, your boot sequence shall be dealt. I have a cold, that's why I'm saying. Roll the intro. The Infinity Fabric, something that made me open well over 30 tabs in Chrome trying to understand its innards and how it works. Did you know that you can have multiple layers in the fabric? I didn't until I researched for this episode. The first news today comes from an interview with David Wang, the new SVP of engineering at AMD's Radeon Technologies Group. In this interview with PC Gamers and they discussed the multi-chip module approach for graphics. MCM is pretty much the same thing that Threadripper and Epic do. Having multiple chips or dies on a single substrate. So what about it? Well, it was rumored that the next gen Navi 10 GPU might use this technology, but it seems like the current limitation really is the way that software sees the dies. To some extent, you're talking about doing crossfire on a single package, said David Wang. The challenge is that unless we make it invisible to the independent software vendors, you're going to see the same sort of reluctance. So basically the question really becomes, is it possible to make a multi-chip GPU invisible to a game developer or to the OS so that they can use it as a single GPU? And to that, Mr. Wang said, anything is possible. Hmm. Now this is only a problem for gaming and maybe video editing since support for Crossfire and SLI has been dying in the last few years. But if we're talking about server grade workloads or even 3D modeling, Crossfire and SLI work incredibly well. So David Wang said that he could definitely see a split in architecture where we would see multi-chip modules on the professional side and not on the gaming line of products. All of that to say that the first generation of Navi 10 GPUs will likely not be multi-chip infinity fabric infused babies that we were all hoping for. Navi 20 maybe. I'll leave a link to the interview down below if you want to dive further into it and thinking about it with Raja Kuduri joining Intel, I think that he might further this idea in their upcoming GPU since that's pretty much what he wanted to do with Vega I think. Speaking of AMD GPUs, a slide for the AMD Radeon Pro V340 has apparently surfaced. While this slide is missing some crucial information, like which architecture it is based on, it seems safe to say that this might be a multi-GPU solution. How do we know that? Well, it was discovered that this card is already present in the drivers as AMD Radeon Pro V340 MX GPU, where that last part means multi-GPU solution. The closest this guess would be a Dual Frontier Edition Vega card given its 32 gigabyte of HBM2. It will probably be a multi-user computing solution given the slide and the fact that it doesn't have any video outputs. Moving on, the Google Pixel Book might get Windows 10 certification soon. Earlier this year, XDA developers noted that the Chrome OS's devs were working on getting an alt OS running on the Pixel Book. A few days ago, it was found in the code reviews that the Windows Hardware Certification Kit and the Windows Hardware Lab Kit were mentioned in said code. That would mean Google is working on getting the Pixel Book to pass the certification suite provided by Microsoft. This really doesn't surprise me. While expensive for a Chromebook, the Pixel Book still packs a punch. And if Apple is open enough to let Windows run on its MacBooks, I think that Google should do the same. What do you think? Would you be tempted to buy a Pixel Book if it was compatible with Windows 10? All right, let's move on to some gaming news, shall we? Ark Survival Evolved is now available for free on iOS and Android. So if you don't have it, go get it. It's weird to see so many big games go mobile, don't you think? I mean, I never would have imagined Fortnite and then PUBG and now Ark to make the move. Even Bethesda has their hat in the ring with the Elder Scrolls Blade. I feel like this is only the beginning. Maybe in a few years we'll see AAA games go straight to mobile at 80 bucks a pop, or even better, see something like Microsoft Microsoft Play Everywhere, where you get the game on all platform for one single price. Nah, they'll never do that, they're too greedy. Anyways, I tried it and it seems like it's pretty fun. I'm not one to sink hours into a mobile game, so you should try it out for yourself. And yes, by the way, you can still make a severely deformed avatar if you want to. Check this one out. And now to answer a question from the audience, and that one is, 
What happened to the bag of pebbles? Hold on a second. It's right here. It hasn't moved. It also has a new brother. These were meant to be decorations for my set, but I ended up not using them and I put them in Ziploc bags. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to stay frosty and click right here to see the latest video and right here to uh, subscribe to the channel. That would be definitely greatly appreciated. Damn, I had to redo so many takes because I'm sick and my nose just keeps... <laughs> Anyways, take care, guys. Stay frosty.